Author Michael Corrin says Islam is playing a role in the persecution of Christians globally. And so, joining us now, a man who clearly is not afraid to court controversy. Here he is, Michael Corrin, the broadcaster and author most recently of Hatred, Islam's War on Christianity. And we welcome you back to TVO. Michael, it's good to see you again. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. You obviously started writing this book before Islamic State started doing its thing, which has obviously captured a long great before. deal of attention long before. But So t t tell us, uh, if it wasn't that that prompted you to write the book, what did? Actually, ISIS, ISIL is not even that relevant because most of their victims are not Christian, and I don't think they speak for the mass of Muslims. This goes back the, the Islam's persecution of Christianity, or at least an interpretation of Islam in many Muslim countries, goes back now a, a good generation. It's never been a good relationship. Um, at its best, Islamic countries have tolerated Christians, even protected them with a head tax that could be 50% of their income, um, but they have lived. Egypt was a majority Christian country. It, it, it wasn't that Islam always existed. People have very short memories or no knowledge of history. Islam came in from elsewhere, from Arabia, but the status quo developed, I understand that. But Christians never enjoyed equality, but they did certainly have a certain form of tolerance and, and understanding. You've seen uh, a different interpretation of Islam, in particular in the past uh, 30 years. And now, those countries that do use Sharia law and Quranic principles as the foundation of their culture do not treat Christians very well at all. Take Pakistan, for example. Uh, Jinnah was a very sophisticated man. He would probably be killed today, by the way, by, by the Taliban. Or, Should explain who he is. Well, Jinnah was a founder of modern Pakistan, mm -hmm. a man uh, very pro-British. He took the Muslim League into alliance with the British during the Second World War. He wanted Pakistan to be less an Islamic state than a state for Muslims to live. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Pakistan, Christians were respected. Actually, so were Jews. Uh, for the past 25 years, maybe a little longer, a blasphemy law has meant that there is terrible persecution, not just to Christians, but Christians are persecuted and arrested, sometimes killed by the mob if they're arrested on blasphemy law. Christians are, are, are murdered. Uh, just the other day, a Christian couple were beaten to death for allegedly defacing a Quran. A woman is meant to be hanged by the Pakistani government, a Christian, for, for uh, commenting on Muhammad. She almost certainly didn't, even if she did, so what? They won't hang her. They'll release her from the prison and Let she'll be killed. Let me jump in there, because I am going to get to, you do go through chapter and verse mm. here of, of many, many extremely disturbing incidents yeah. that you have chronicled. Before we get to that, uh, let me read this, uh, this rather excerpt from the book. Is the most hideous, vehement, and widespread persecution of an identifiable minority in modern times, you write, and it is taking place before our eyes. Yet so many people prefer blindness to a clarity of vision that might shock and disturb and shake us from our comfort zone. Let's pursue that a bit. Christians, you believe, are really the most persecuted minority group in the world today? Mm. It's not really my opinion that matters here. This is the opinion of, of neutral, non-Christian, even anti-Christian bodies, parts of the United Nations and so on. But we, we've got to be very clear what we mean. We, we don't mean Christians in North America and Europe who have an argument about baking a cake for a gay wedding or something like that. Uh, this is a clash of developing cultures. It'll all sort itself out. We're, we're speaking of other parts of the world. There's persecution in China and North Korea, but that's about control. It's not anti-Christian as such. It's controlling people. There has been in India, but Hindu culture and the Indian government it, it does not embrace this and the government's always stopped it very quickly. But in the Islamic world, the top 20 countries that persecute Christians, only two are non-Muslim. Christians in these countries suffer terribly. In Iraq, oh, maybe 80% of Christians have either been killed or have fled. The same is occurring in Syria. By the way, both countries under fairly secular Ba'athist leaders, uh, Saddam and Assad, did not actually persecute Christians. In Egypt, maybe as much as 15%, certainly 10% Christian, the persecution and suffering is appalling. Um, in Indonesia, I mean, three schoolgirls, Christian schoolgirls going to school are beheaded by an Islamist gang and their heads put in public positions. In northern Nigeria, Nigeria is 54% Christian. In the northern states that have Sharia, Moderate Muslims have been slaughtered as well, but Christians, I mean, that chapter, I had, to, I had to edit the chapter, it was too long. Every day at one period, of about a year and a half, Islamists murdering Christians. Okay, but a lot of the countries that you mention, and each, each country is a chapter where you go through mm. many of the examples. But I, I look at Syria and Iraq and, and Egypt to a certain extent and Pakistan to a certain extent. A lot of the countries where these things are happening are countries that are just simply in complete chaos everywhere. And I wonder whether that, as opposed to any particular religious war, 
helps explain the phenomenon you're writing about? Well, that's a good question, but Iran is not in chaos, and the Iranian government actually tolerates those who are born Christian, but often uh, executes murders, converts to Christianity. Saudi Arabia is not in chaos, it's illegal to be a Christian. Uh, Egypt, I wouldn't argue, is in chaos. I, I think it's a, a challenging and troubling time. But it's that, a mess, though. Well, but that, look, I, I first went to Egypt back in 79. I've seen uh, many changes, but even back then, Christians, it was a different position, and there was an upper middle class of Christians that had done quite well, but many were still persecuted. Executed. In Nigeria, corruption, instability, Christians and Muslims coexist, live together in many parts of the world. In the north, Christians are specifically targeted. This is the thing, Christians are targeted, even in Turkey with a tiny Christian minority. Well, back in the 50s, there was a pogrom of, of, of Greek Christians. We had a Catholic priest who was beheaded just a few years ago. It's also the, the attitude towards Christians from many of those who interpret Islam in, in a very severe form these days. And it's growing, it's expanding. What is said about Christians, Indonesia was founded on secular principles. The government there is, in a way, trying to maintain those. But you see a specific anti-Christian campaign by rebels in, in many of, of the islands. You know, I, I'd prefer to say, no, it's not about Islam or Islamism. It, it, it's, it, it's poverty or injustice or oppression. That's too facile. Okay, and it's but inaccurate. When, when you say targeted, though, targeted by whom? Targeted by those who have a very specific interpretation of Islam. I do not for a moment believe all Muslims believe this. Uh, many, I think Christians are, are the, the, the canaries in, in the mind, really. If they could get their hands on Jews, believe me, they would do the same. They kill moderate Muslims too. In Algeria, there was a terrible campaign. There weren't that many Christians. They were slaughtering other Muslims. Sunni and Shia, some of the devastation is appalling. But beyond the violence, the discrimination against Christians, the, the ceilings on their careers and lives, the way they're treated socially. But I guess what I'm trying to understand is, do you see this as a bunch of nuts run amok, or is this more a more deeply state-entrenched, supported, sanctioned, promoted view? When Syria and Iraq, always majority Muslim, were led by secular, if despotic, leaders, there was not a, not a targeting of Christians. When Saddam died and when Assad lost much of its power, Islamists deliberately targeted Christians. Um, I've got a, a, at home, I, I sometimes just put them in my hand, a couple of shell casing and, and some shrapnel picked up from the floor of a church in Baghdad. 58, I think it was 58 people were killed, many others horribly wounded. Um, at mass, 2010, when an Islamist gang went in, and w when churches are targeted and destroyed, uh, when clergy are deliberately targeted, when those leaving a church service are murdered, you have to conclude from this, and the statements made, that Christians are being targeted. Okay, yes. okay but that's not the question. The question is, is it state sanctioned and promoted, or a bunch of renegade nuts who are doing this? Well, it's state sanctioned in Pakistan, there's a blasphemy law. Uh, our country's trying to stop it, I don't think they're trying to stop it in, in, in Turkey or Iran or when it occurs in Saudi Arabia. I w I, look, Jordan, I think the government tries to, to stop it. It's fairly limited there. Indonesia, there is some resistance. But uh, otherwise, honestly, Steve, um, in Egypt, the government has played games with its Christian minority. Sometimes it might crack down on oppression. Often it doesn't. Is it state sanctioned? We have to ask questions about what Sharia law means and where Christians stand under Quranic teaching. Do they enjoy equality? Is a Christian, even if not attacked on the street, is he allowed to speak about his faith in public? If a Muslim in a Muslim state wants to convert to Christianity, will that be allowed? Th these are fundamental, if not fundamentalist, questions that have to be asked. Uh, get comfortable for a second, because we're going to play some tape here. This is about <laughs> a minute long, and uh, I don't know if you've seen this before, but you've surely heard of it. This is Bill Maher's show, Real Time on HBO, and author Sam Harris and actor Ben Affleck I got into it. I have seen it, yes. You have seen it, okay. <laughs> for those who haven't, roll tape. We have been sold this meme of Islamophobia where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry toward Muslims as people. Right. And that is uh, it's, it's intellectually <laughs> ridiculous. They even it gets So hold on, are racist. you the person who understands the officially codified doctrine of Islam? You're uh, the interpreter well, of that, well, so you well, can say, well, I, this I'm, is... I'm, I'm, I think actually, any, I'm actually well-educated on this topic. I'm, I'm asking you. So I mean, you're you, saying if I criticize the... You're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing. That if you're critical of something... It well, it's not a real thing when we do it. Right. <laughs> well, well, no, it no, really no, isn't. I, I'm not denying not... That, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people. That's, right. And that's a that's problem. big of you. But the... But why are you so hostile to, about this it's, it's gross. It's racist. Yeah, or how but, about but, the but, more than a billion those, people those who are aren't Muslims fanatical, too. who don't punish well, women, who just want to go to the store... Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. any of the things that you're saying all Muslims... Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. And you're painting the whole religion with that. No, no. Okay, if you were on that program, 
and you were into it with Ben Affleck, what would you have said to him? Well, I think when he said it was gross, we really had the great philosopher speaking there, didn't we? Uh, you know, what, what really offended me by that was that when Bill Maher and Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins and the late Chris Hitchens... Your and favorite Kurt atheist. Russell, well, yeah, and Chris was a, a friend, but when they have said the most acid things about Catholicism, for example, and they have, and they're entitled to it, it's up to them, mm -hmm. I haven't heard Ben Affleck and his buddies saying, hey, hold on, not all Catholics are like that, and that's not really what the church teaches. Why now? What was being said there was entirely accurate. This, this canard of Islamophobia, there are people who hate Muslims. I don't meet these people, I'm sure they exist out there, and they're, they're simple bigots to be dismissed and ignored. But if you want to critique and criticize a teaching of Islam, if you want to ask questions, what does Islam actually say about this? Why do so many Muslims have this understanding of Islam if it doesn't say that? Then you're accused of being an Islamophobe by, by an intellect like Ben Affleck. Okay, I, I, I hear you on that. However, the title of your book is Hatred, Islam's war on Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's not hatred, renegade Islam's war on Christianity or uh, Islam, you know, uh, Islamists' uh, war on Christianity. I know, it's hard to say, isn't it? It is hard to say. <laughs> or you know, jihadi Islam's war on Christian Christianity. It's Islam's war on Christianity. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you are painting a billion. I mean, as Ben tried to make the point there. Are you painting a billion Muslims with the same brush by do calling the book what you've called it? I'm not talking about Muslims, I'm talking about Islam. I, I want to start a debate and a dialogue. But, and look, not that I matter very much, I'm hardly that high profile, but the, the threats that I've had for many years and still continue to have because I, I have these views, I've spoken about the persecution of Christians for years. Nothing seems to change. So I would be the first to admit the title is meant to grab. Of course it is. I want people to speak about this. It's not an academic tome. It's a book by, I hope, a fairly informed journalist. I've, I've traveled the Middle East widely. Uh, uh, to explain what is really happening to a terribly persecuted people. I don't think the semantics, I mean, it's a, it's a good question, but I don't think the semantics of the issue. It, it is what is occurring as we speak to people. Whether it's because they are Christian or Muslim or black or gay is not really the point. The point is people are being persecuted. And honestly, Steve, I don't want to be falsely emotional here, but the number of people I have sat with, particularly Arab and Pakistani Christians who have wept in front of me, and, and people simply will not listen. So the discussion has to begin. It's not helped by people like Mr. Affleck, who, I mean, um, Sam Harris actually is quite a scholar and knows far more about Islam than, than Ben Affleck does. Mm -hmm. But because he's read lines in a movie written by someone else, apparently he's qualified well, to speak about no, it. He's qualified to speak about it because he's a person with an opinion. I'm, uh, you know, he, he's nothing more than that. But his opinion is only listened to because he, he's a good-looking guy who plays in movies. Uh, fair enough, but he's, he's trying to fight the good fight on behalf of, uh, if I understood what he said correctly, on behalf of the uh, hundreds of millions of Muslims in the world who have no interest in going out and slaughtering Christians. I don't think he is. I think what this is about, because he's never stood up, as I mentioned, for Catholics or evangelicals, make fun of them, say nasty things about them. It's because there are people out there who've built... They may be physically frightened. It's probably not the issue. They're frightened of being accused of Islamophobia or racism. It has nothing to do with race. Most of the victims of, of Islamism are, are, are people of color, I would think. What it is, they've built a foundation, an ideology, on relativism. Everything is the same. No religion is different, less tolerant, more violent than any other, and suddenly they're having to rethink that, and they're terrified. It's all being pulled up from underneath them. Bill Maher has the courage to do it. Hmm. Ben Affleck and his friends don't. Because you believe that there is something that... I don't want to put words in your mouth, I should ask you. Do you believe there is something about Islam that makes it intrinsically more violent and deadly and more persecuting a religion than all the rest? There is nowhere in the New Testament where Jesus calls for violence. He, he, there is one phrase he where he turned over the tables in the because they were selling bruised and damaged goods and defacing God. It's hardly calling for mass persecution or pogrom. Fair enough. He wants to bring a sword to divide. He said, "I'm not here to unify. There'll be division." But he he's a man who says, "Peace, peace, peace." Christians have committed crimes, many in spite of that. The Old Testament there are violent passages, mm -hmm. but for. 2,200 years now, Jews have believed in rabbinical interpretation, and they've never really believed that what was written 4,000 years ago applies to the 21st century. Does Islam teach, do the majority of Muslims believe that what was written in the Quran in the, in the 7th century still applies to the 21st? Some do. Some do, and they have to be empowered, and they have to speak up and be listened to. There's more and more of them, but too many leaders of Islam are saying, no, everything is literal, and too many of their followers, many of, of whom do not read or speak Arabic, many of whom are illiterate, unfortunately, uh, in the Arab world in particular in Pakistan, are, are believing what they're told. I want the conversation. I'm not claiming to have all of the answers, but I know that in a context of mass persecution, we have to have a conversation and not hide behind words like Islamophobia. I know one of the things you like to do when you write your books is to provoke debate, and we are going to do that now. You have done it, and we're going to continue it. 
Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.